I think most of what you heard was not actually um, sound cues. They were actually uh, pre-programmed by the composer and the uh, uh, music director, Raleigh. So what he did was he used um, a keyboard and then a main stage, and he came up with like sound effects like the water and the, the sea, you know, crashing and all that kind of stuff. Um, the only thing that I would say maybe was a collaborative part of that would have been if there needed to be any sort of additional effects to that. So if we needed to add reverb or anything to some of those sounds, um, part of that was done at the soundboard. Um, but as far as like when to use those sound effects and when not to, um, I can't say for certain, but since Raleigh composed the music for the entire show, I'm pretty sure that he just kind of did whatever he wanted to creatively, and then maybe if it was too much, it was pulled back by Denise, the director. Well, everything was performed live, so there was no um, track element to anything. Um, but there were two keyboard players. One of those keyboard players was actually playing the bass during certain parts of the music. So he was doing bass and then keyboard, depending on what he was doing. Um, and then between those two keyboard players, they basically pre-programmed pre pre all of the um, sound effects uh, as far as like the waves crashing and like weird, just like C type sounds. And then also all of the different layers of um, synthesized sounds or sampled keyboard sounds that were played during the actual music itself. In a theater, um, environment, everyone is wearing a wireless either lapel or headset mic and those actual microphones are typically omnidirectional microphones. Um, the reason for that is because with an omnidirectional microphone, no matter where it was placed, you weren't going to necessarily get a, um, well the term is called the proximity effect, but you're not going to get a much louder sound from maybe it being closer to the mouth as opposed to being farther back. So they're designed to just pick up a space as opposed to a direction, which is typical with a handheld mic. The problem with that is if you use those kind of microphones and you're moving around a lot and you have speakers that might get in really any, depending on how loud the speakers are, you know, six to eight foot radius of that, then you get stuff that might happen. You might get feedback. You might get some other issues. The terms get sort of convoluted, which is tricky. You know, you can have an engineer. I mean, they're almost closer to like a technical director. They sort of understand the infrastructure. What are microphones doing when they're doing this? Knowing how to set up a game stage on a board, how to set up an EQ that's good, and also using compressors. What is the best way to actually like connect all these different pieces so that it's functioning at a high level? And so when I got into doing this, I was probably more leaning towards the engineering side of it. So a designer would actually be more focused on the sound of the space itself. Here's a great example. A designer would be someone who would say, oh, there's this scene where we hear a cat running into a trash can, kind of thing, right? So a designer would say, instead of just putting it through the loudspeaker, let's hide a speaker inside the trash can. And then when you're in the space, when you hear the sound effect, you actually hear it coming from the trash can. So it connects visually what you're seeing with what you're hearing and it actually like gives it a little more of a believable effect. That's kind of more what a designer would do. A designer would consider where to put things so that the space itself interacts with the audience. Um, because it's the right distance out of the city. We don't want to be, it can't be downtown. Like there's a nice amphitheater in Bicentennial Mall where the, at the foot of the Capitol Hill. But on a Friday night during a baseball game with people screaming and fireworks going off and stuff, it would be really distracting to our audiences. Although our actors are able to focus amid distractions, our audiences are easily distracted. Last year we had Beyonce in the background because she was at Vanderbilt um, she was at Vanderbilt Stadium and we could hear her during Midsummer Night's Dream. It was pretty cool. <laughs> like, we didn't complain. And, you know, we could brag that, like, yeah, Beyonce's backing us up tonight. So.